Pastor Al First Baptist Church of Bernalillo. You're, I hope you're here for a word with Pastor Al, and we're going to continue our thought process. And today's word is tribulation. Now, we talked about some things uh, Sunday, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I made a statement. I said tribulation is when good and evil clash. Uh, Webster looks at it like this, a state of great trouble or suffering. And I think as the children of God that we need to have an understanding of why we have tribulation and the types that we can avoid and and whatnot. But uh, it all started back in the garden. Uh, You know, Adam and Eve took of the fruit. Uh, You know, they were deceived. And and the very thing that we talked about yesterday, you know, they were, they got in trouble and sin come into the picture. And the Lord, when he... uh, chastised them there in the garden. He said, he said to the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be a contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. And uh, then he said to Adam, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree, which I commanded you, uh, you shall not eat of. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life, thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field, but by the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, uh, for you are dust, and dust you shall return. That's found in Genesis chapter 3. But that was the beginning of it, you know, uh, the Lord wanted us to worship and have harmony and and to uh you know, take care of the garden and, and the earth and, re- you know, multiply and, and, and grow it. And, you know, those type things we take for granted. But because of sin, we have tribulation. But Romans 12, verse 12 is my verse for the day. And it's rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Our lives, we go through life and we have tribulation. And, and you know, there's not a day goes by and we don't have some sort of tribulation. I've been fighting a hot water heater here at the church all day and um, putting in lines and trying to add a place to fill up a mop bucket and things like that. But uh, it's not going as easy as I'd like it to. And I broke a sweat a couple of times and, and you know, I'm having to grunt with a big pipe wrench. And those type things are tribulation, even though it's just part of a job. It's because we have we brought it on ourselves. OK. Now, this tribulation that we're going to talk about today is not the great tribulation. We're in the book of Revelation, and that's what we're preaching from on Sunday. But the great tribulation is that one that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24, verse 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as not been from the beginning of the world until now, no, and never will be. That seven years, uh, the first three and a half is man's judgment on man, and then the second three and a half is going to be God's judgment on man. And it's just going to be terrible. And uh, but the child of God, we're going to be spared from the great tribulation. OK, so we don't have to worry about that. As we read it in Revelation 3.10, it says, because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. We have um, because we are the child, child children of God. If we've accepted that free gift of salvation through grace, it doesn't cost us anything. We just have to believe that Jesus was the son of God, that he came to die, to wash our sins away, atoned uh, uh, the, the sins, not only our sins, but he atoned all the sins back to Adam and Eve. And he gives us that propitiation. He makes us as if we've never sinned. That's just kind of erases what happened there in the Garden of Eden. And now we can go back to that place that we are his children and uh, as he created us. However, we still have this factor that we are alive today. We have this jar of clay, this flesh, um, and we have been tainted with sin. Um, But we have to understand that God has left us here to manifest Jesus, to be a good factor in a corrupt world that the flesh, the world, and Satan, uh, the evil one that we talked about on a couple occasions uh, Sunday, um, we see that good and evil. See, we are the good factor. The children of God, they're the good factor. And we know that we will have tribulation in this bad factor of the world. 
In John 16, 33, we read, I, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. We can have peace even if we've got tribulation, okay? In the world, you will have tribulation. There it is. Jesus said it, okay? You can't, you can't deny it. It says it right there. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Just as I said, he died on the cross to uh, wash our sins away. To, uh, As we talked about yesterday, he took the keys and the power of death away from Satan. And we don't have to worry about those things. And one day we won't have tribulation. Amen. I look forward to that. But we are here today and we have a life to live. And there is tribulation in the world. Jesus just said that. He told us how to have peace, but how do we endure through this tri uh, tribulation? And I just kind of, just a couple of, uh, you know, three things here that, that I believe will help you, but it takes our having the right mindset and, and doing the things that we need to in this time of uh, tribulation that we find ourselves. And, and it gets darker and darker and darker. And uh, individuals, strong Christians that I know, they're going through great tribulation right now with the things that are going on. Uh, you know, this COVID, uh, the, the different things that are going on in our country, uh, this election that's coming up, and just all kinds of crazy stuff. And it's, I want to keep our eyes on heaven. I want to keep our eyes on the kingdom and what's important. And here's what the Lord tells us to do. First, we got to trust. Uh, to endure these tribulations, trust, Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. We all need to underline that and do not lean on your own understanding, me included. Uh, we have to listen to the Holy Spirit. And we have to gather those things that he has given us. And how does the Holy Spirit and the Lord speak to us? That's right, his word, okay? And all thy ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. So if we take out the roadmap we call the Bible and we listen and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us through the, God's word, and to recall those things in which the Lord has taught us through our lives uh, and trust him. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. He would give us peace, uh, you know, that passes all understanding. He has told us that he would provide for us. He would protect us. And we've talked about all these different things. Uh, our word list is getting fairly long. Uh, but here's the thing. He has said that we need to do what's on his mind. His heart, not ours, not understand what we want, but listen to what he says. Not only trust, but then present. We need to present ourselves as workmen. Those that are here to manifest Jesus, to do the work of God uh, here on this earth, to be that good in a very bad world. But it says to present, 2 Timothy 2.15, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. It's one thing to read the Bible, but it's another when I see people take verses that just, they, they cherry pick a couple of verses to fit their need. And you can find a verse somewhere in the Bible to, um, you know, if you pull it out of context, you can make it mean just about anything. But read the Bible in context. Learn God's word in context. Put it into action in context where that you can understand and stand strong and not be ashamed. Uh, have you ever done something and you didn't do it the way it was supposed to be and it kind of blew up in your face? You say, oh man, I messed that up. Well, then you get ashamed. And that's what we can do. If we misuse God's word for the wrong way, in the wrong way and for the wrong reasons, we can have a bad uh, situation on our hands. But let's present ourselves that, that workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Uh, so we need to trust, we need to present, but then as we talked about Sunday and all seven of these love letters that we're talking about there, the seven churches, at the end of them all, there's a paragraph that says, he that overcomes, or he says, he that hath an ear to let him hear, uh, but you need to overcome. In 1 John 5, 4, it says, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. Let me read that again, because a lot of people don't understand that. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. If you've been born again, you're not part of this world. You're in it, but not of it. You are a pilgrim passing through. Your heaven, heaven is your home, and we need to keep that in our mind. The verse goes on and says, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, and then there's a hyphen there, and it says, our faith. Do you trust the Lord? We talked about that yesterday. You've got to trust him and believe that he's a rewarder. 
of those that, that search for him. And I believe that we have to claim the victory instead of uh, letting Satan and our flesh and this world drag us down roads we don't want to go. Overcome. Say no. Remember yesterday we said resist the devil. Amen. Draw near to God and the devil will flee. Use his word and, and overcome. So those are three things. They're, they're pretty simple and you probably know these things. Sometimes we need to be reminded. I know I do sometimes. And I, I think we, we can do better than what we do. Um, I'm looking so forward to um, a day when we can unite and come back to church and, and just enjoy one another's company. Forget the outside world. I'm, 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 I'm serious. I, I, I look, I miss my church family and being able to, to hug and, and to have fellowship and to eat and to pray together. I mean, we're doing it at church and things like that, but it's, it's not the same. It's not like our Wednesday night or when we just gather and have socials and things like that. And I missed coming together. So here's the thing. Y'all, y'all just pray that the Lord would open those doors up. Um, but here's the thing. If we do those things, if, if, if we trust in the Lord, we present ourselves uh, that we might not be ashamed, and then we overcome the devil in the world, that dark one, uh, the evil, uh, there are reinforcements uh, if they are done in obedience. If we follow God's word, we listen to the conviction of the Holy Spirit, and we, we allow ourselves to be drawn to the will of God, uh, we have reinforcements. Exodus uh, 23, 22 says, but if you uh, are carefully, uh, but if you carefully obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. Isn't it cool that God's on our side? And I believe if we do things in a godly way, a fashion in which God is, is pleased, amen, and we stand strong, even if it means that we suffer, we go through tribulation and we have a hard time of it. If we do it God's way, then whoever's opposing us They've got God uh, they have to deal with, okay? So let's remain steadfast while doing good. James 1.12 says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. These tests that we go through and the things that God's doing, let's do our part. And it says, For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Do you love Jesus? We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. And I'm willing to suffer for the Lord, too. And I, I'm, I believe we're going to see more and more suffering. But I believe we need to stand strong. And th today is the day um, of salvation. And we need to do everything we can to share with a lost and dying world. That troublemaker we call the devil is out there. Roy, or seeking him who he may devour and, and, and attack and just tear down. And I, I just want to fight him every chance I get. So back to our verse of the day, we're going to have tribulation, we're going to have all this stuff, and we have to understand that. Romans 12, 12, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. And my attitude adjustment for the day is, no matter how bad things get, I will be good in the Lord. I can't do it by myself. I, I have to have the Lord. I have to rely on his word. I have to rely on the Holy Spirit. I have to rely on his power. And that is how we can hold our heads up in tribulation and be strong and courageous plow through the dark times. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you would help us, your children, uh, your body manifested here on this earth, the bride of your son, Jesus. I pray that you would give us the direction, the wisdom, uh, help us to recall scripture, help us uh, not to get so caught up in the world that we lose sight of what you want us to do about heaven. And I pray that you would just lift us up. Give us that peace. Give us that strength and courage. And I pray, Lord, uh, that you'd give us peace. So much unrest right now, especially in your church. And I pray that you would just touch us. I pray that you would draw us together, unify us, that we might be useful to you for the purpose of growing the kingdom. And I thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all have a blessed night. I'll see you tomorrow, okay?